Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back. I'm Caitlin, your geeky girlfriend, and I'm going to do another Bookie Babe book review video in this, um, in this video, a book. I'm going to add another video to my Bookie Babe series is what I was trying to say. And, um, this book actually will be number 17 for the year. So I have surpassed my reading challenge. And now we're just trying to find books that are kind of quick, like, when I'm picking books to read now, I'm picking books that'll be quick reads that I can just cross off the list to prep because I want to like have something ready to start like on January 1st or start it like around that time. Um, I actually already know what my like Christmas break book is going to be. So I'm currently reading a book and um, I will definitely have it finished before Christmas break. So maybe I'll get another book in there. We'll just see. But I already know what my Christmas break book is going to be. It was actually gifted to me and I have to have it read by the first week of January. So that is exciting. But um, so we're just kind of finding quick reads and checking them off the list. But this um, book that I'm going to talk about today was actually our December book club choice or technically November book club choice. And um, uh, before we get into it, I want to say my usual spiel. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you scroll down, check out all of my latest uploads. I've uploaded four videos so far today. I was a little bit behind on uploading, so make sure you take the time and you can save them for later, add them to your playlists, whatever, so you can come back and watch them. But, um, this is going to be, like I said, another book review. And I have also already reviewed this book on Goodreads. So if you're not already a follower or friend over there, you can go friend me and follow me um, over there. I'm Caitlin McClure, but you can still probably search it by your geeky girlfriend. Um, and you can find all of my fully detailed, sometimes spoilers, reviews. Most of the time I try and keep them spoiler free here on YouTube for the most part, but um, on Goodreads, I will indicate if there are spoilers or not. And sometimes my reviews over there are a little bit more detailed depending on how quickly I write them. But we're going to go ahead and get into the topic of today's video. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the book A Knit of Identity. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Oops. Let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger for you guys. It doesn't look like it. So A Knit of Identity. It's a blue cover with a truck. Um, and this book is written by Chris Motto. I had the um, privilege of meeting Chris yesterday and she is um, very insightful. It was amazing to hear her process and the research behind this novel. This is her debut novel and um, we were all so excited to read it and get some swag from her. Um, and you can follow her on Goodreads and over on Instagram as well. And um, she is in the process of writing a second book. So I can't say any more about that, but she was giving us some details. And honestly, just based on the details that she gave me of the next one, I'm a little bit more excited to read that one than I was for this one. So um, we'll go ahead and get into it. So I don't have the book physically. Um, I just borrowed it from a friend who's in the book club, but it's 198 pages. So it's a pretty short read, a pretty... Um, small read. Um, and I actually, I did read it in a week. I got it last Tuesday and finished it yesterday. Um, so I read it in about, you know, four and a half ish, five days, but it was a slow read for me. Um, some people in my book club read it in like a day or two. It took me the full five days. Now I will say the second half of the book reads a lot faster than the first half. In the first half, there was a lot of like truck driver, terminology and jargon, which I'll talk about in just a minute, but, um, there was a lot of that and kind of a lot of jumping around between like past and present. And it is a little bit hard to follow. I mean, I wasn't overly confused, but there were certain things that I had a hard time visualizing because I'm not familiar with the context and the situation. Now, something that's interesting about this novel is in the novel, a construction accident is deep, um, depicted. And that is something that Chris, the author, actually experienced herself. So when she's writing Danny's perspective, it was actually um, interesting to hear that that was actually 100% Chris's perspective. And she just made Danny have that same experience. So it was really cool to talk with her about how she developed the characters and like her feelings about different aspects of the book. Um, 
So, A Knit of Identity follows Danny Fletcher, who's actually a woman truck driver, and already um, that's something that is kind of like, oh, okay. So, if you're looking for a book that has, like, a really strong female lead, then this is a book for you. Um, it does have very strong feminist principles and concepts, um, and including, like, Danny not really taking on conventional gender roles. So, like, until the end of the book, she doesn't really have goals for marriage or relationships. She, um is really free with, like, her sexuality and just kind of wants to, like, have sex to fulfill her needs. She doesn't really like the whole relation idea of a relationship, and she kind of deal, you know, goes through, like, she has some guys that try and woo her over, and she's like, what are you, she just feels like they're wasting their time. Um, and she's not good at, like, cooking or doing the dishes or whatever. Her lifestyle just doesn't um, aid in that way because she's on the road so much, and, um, so this whole book is about her discovering who she is, who she, what she wants, who she wants to be, um, and then kind of helping other people, namely a guy that she meets on the road, Jesse, um, love himself and um, discover himself and comes come to terms with his identity. So um, there's a lot of self-discovery in the book, a lot of... Um, some themes of like nature versus nurture and how we how we do come to our own identity um particularly with the storyline of Jesse like what happened to him as a young boy has really shaped who he is today um and I like I said it's a strong female lead there are some feminist principles in it so if you like um feminine driven books then this is a good one for you. I got a little lost in the truck driver jargon, um, and that's what made it a slow start for me. But the second half of the book really picks up. That's when you find out more about Jesse's childhood, and you like, and Danny um, learns how to love him better. She learns like what he needs from her, and um, starts worrying less about what she wants from him, but how she can love him and help him like love himself. So it's kind of a beautiful. Um, storyline and it kind of takes a beautiful turn um, and there are um, I do have to give a trigger warning I put this in my Goodreads review as well this book does explore themes of sexuality gender um, sexual abuse sexual assault religious trauma um, and death suicide um, and drugs uh, drinking, and um, there is language. So it's definitely not for children. This is an adult novel. Um, it is fiction, but there are some realistic events that inspired the book. And um, so overall, it I ended the reading feeling glad that I finished the book because I worked really hard to finish it on time and I'm really glad that I did finish it because there were a couple people who were like, eh, just skim or like, if you don't care if the ending is spoiled for you, like, don't worry about finishing it. But I am a completist and I wanted to finish it and I was happy that I did. I think um, the story does end, you know, some people were disappointed with the ending. They wanted a little bit more closure, but I kind of like the hopefulness and the optimism that's at the end of the story and I think... Um, Danny does truly discover herself by the end and she kind of knows what she wants and she just is left like waiting for the right time. Um, and I think that's a big step for her. A lot of people are really um, attached to the character of Agnes and um, Danny figures out a little bit too late that she is as well. Um, so there are just a lot of like complex themes and like just kind of emotions that Danny has to kind of grapple with to realize like, oh, I should have been more forward about telling people that I love them and I shouldn't have been so closed off and just different things like that. Um, I, on Goodreads, I gave it like a two and a half, but I rounded that up to three after meeting with Chris. Um, really the main reason for my review is just that the beginning is so slow and it took a lot of commitment and dedication to kind of power through to the second half where the climactic reveal is. And then once you get, it was like page 95 or so. So almost exactly halfway through, um, it really picks up. And like I said, that's when more of the care, like the character development starts coming in. Um, and you know, because for the first half, you're really just getting Danny's kind of past 
and her kind of where she's at right now. And it's just like a series of flashbacks. So then you start getting introduced to more characters and there's more character development. You see more from Danny. And so it makes it an easier read. So really that was the biggest, um, the biggest, I don't want to say complaint, but the biggest drawback for me is that it was a slow read. And I was remind like this book made me feel like a slow reader. And I feel like I'm not a slow reader, but it made me feel like a slow reader because I felt like I had to keep reading some passages over and over again to kind of try and understand like what was happening. And I did get to the point where I was like, you know what, it doesn't really matter in the end. Um, and so I had to kind of compromise with myself while reading about if I wanted to um, try and visualize some of these things or if I just wanted to kind of move past it. Um, and so I had to choose the latter. So I think if it would have read a little bit faster, it would have improved my review. I will say several members of my book club gave it four and five stars. So maybe I'm being a little bit harsh. But overall, like I said, I, I liked how the story ended. I think um, both major characters did learn some things about themselves and um, helped they helped each other heal a little bit, which I think is great. Um, but yeah, that's about all I, ha I don't want to, I can't say too much more because it will spoil it. And I try to keep my YouTube reviews kind of spoiler free, but um, pay attention. I will say I put this in my Goodreads review as well, but pay attention to when Danny and Gary are talking in the Yellow Submarine because there's a key detail about a, something that is going to be revealed later on in the book. And I made the connection based on that conversation between Danny and Gary. I knew where, like, I was able to make a prediction of where the book was going. And the author told me that I'm, like, one in 100 people who have made that connection and knew that that was where it was going because of that. So I felt pretty proud of myself that my deductive reasoning, my critical thinking came in clutch and helped me make that prediction. Um, but I was correct. And for that, for that perspective, from that perspective, I would say the book almost is predictable. However, the ending, there are some things at the end that um, you're not expecting. And one of my friends from book club did cry during this book. Um, <clears throat> people were left like, oh my gosh, with like these big reveal moments. And I missed out on that because I made that connection. So for me, there wasn't like this huge big reveal. I just knew it was coming. Um, so pay attention to that if you decide to pick this up. But you can buy this book on Amazon. And um, and yeah, stay tuned for Chris Motto's other book, which she said might be done in like the next five years. So very early in development, but it um, is already sounding like it's going to be something that is intriguing and that I would probably read, especially now that I've met her. Um, I would definitely read it and support. So um, I hope if you decide to read this book that you enjoy it and just know that people have said that it is a, a good book to get you thinking. It's a thought-provoking book, more of an intellectual book. So um, if that's your thing, then this is definitely a book for you. It just was a little bit too slow in some parts for me, but it did have a very speedy and... Um, I would say very speedy, like third quarter. The ending kind of slowed down a little bit for me, but the third quarter was um, a very quick read and I liked the climax of the novel. So thank you so much, Chris. I hope if you ever watch this video, this makes it to you that you um, that I did you justice in reviewing this book. But thanks for the swag. Thanks for visiting us. And um, as always, thank you to my viewers for watching and staying tuned for all of these books. Let me know in the comments what you want me to add to my 2024 reading list because I'm starting to pile things up and um, we'll see what happens. We will see if we can meet the challenge next year. Um, looking like maybe two more books coming at you for this year as a nice wrap up. And um, this book was actually book number 17. So I'm feeling pretty good about myself and um, I'm happy that I was able to meet my challenge. So thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.